Hello, Brandon in Tulsa, Oklahoma. See more better here with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut lenses for the Oakley 8046 Airdrop. Color is the gray shadow in the 55 eye size. Comes with some cool red on the sides. But I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses and cut your prescription lenses with the house anti-glare. Let me go ahead and take the original lenses out. Put this into the tracing element of my blocker but before i begin i want to program this shape into the computer so years from now should you ever need new lenses for this frame i can pull this up in the database and get these started off so i'm going to hit the start button a little stylus is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase. So in just a moment your shape will pull up onto the computer screen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's move that on to the next screen. Your pupillary distance for your right eye is 33. The computer starts at 32.5, so I only need to tap the plus button one time. I do want to go up, and let's put the optical center height at 19. We're going to go 2 millimeters above and cut it at 19. So I can get your lenses prepped. Your right eye reads minus 1 and a quarter, minus 75 at 85. Minus 1 and a quarter, minus 75 Put the axis wheel on 85, the power drum on minus one and a quarter. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Rotate the lens until the spherical component comes into view first. Check your astigmatism correction, that looks good. Put three dots on your lenses. The ink has not dried off yet. This is the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right which is minus 50 minus 175 at 75 minus 50 minus 175 at 75 take the lens out of the protective packet put the power drum on minus 50 rotate the lens until the spherical component comes into view check the second curve which is your astigmatism correction I'll explain all that later and again put three dots on your lenses and we will label this one L for left now, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. You know you were getting that joke. So this is a block, or as I like to call him, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got those here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick this one onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Whoa! Come here. Come here. Ah. Let's do it again. I knocked the sticker off. Don't worry, it landed sunny side up. Put that one on there. In fact, since you want to run away, let's use you first. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back, that silver button is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time, it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that the lens is oriented in there just perfectly because of your astigmatism correction. It can only go in one way. I'm going to line everything up. That black dot is your optical center it's going to sit in front of your pupil these other two dots tells me this oriented in there just perfectly i want to see the size of the lens that looks good hit the button the arm's going to come down place the block onto the right lens we're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right just like me i ain't i ain't right either so pull that away make the black side sticky same pupillary distance for your left eye 33 so that has just mirrored to the right side same optical center height Get everything lined up perfectly the way it should be. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down place the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy anymore with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. I'm going to wake up the computer. You are Secret Agent 1356. One three five six. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material, but we're going to stick with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens. 
is it won't protrude from the frame. But I will put one on the rear concave surface of the lens, even though I doubt it will pr protrude from the back of the frame. But I'll show you why I do that anyway. Now the magnet's going to do its job twice. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there into the chuck. Or uh, by now, you know, I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Hit the green arrow which you start. The door closes. The clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it is at first large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the right side of the frame. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing or essentially the best cosmetic look. But I doubt you'll have any edge thickness with your prescription in this frame. Now as I mentioned, well hang on, I'm getting ahead of myself. The light you see flickering in the background is water. That is there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high index plastic and Trivex lenses cut wet. Meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now water will spray onto these lenses but only for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris. Now as I mentioned your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. It's also the same lens material that OSHA requires in safety glasses for anyone who works on factory floors and speaking of protection. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes unlike the lotions creams and sprays that you have to reapply every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in tulsa oklahoma now you also have the anti-glare coating anti-glare is three features in one the first feature is it reduces glare when driving at night particularly driving at night in the rain but also from stop lights, street lights, computer screens, overhead lights, and such. It also goes by the initials ARC. You can see how the fluorescent light above reflects off of the demo lenses that don't have it. It reduces the reflection, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. It makes for a much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash or if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see the reflection of the camera in the lens. Now the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating. The machine that applies the anti-glare vaporizes eight different coatings onto your lens and it costs over a million dollars and takes over 24 hours. So because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. Now the Oakley Airdrop 8046 also comes in about five other colors. Of course, the Black is one of the more common, and they also have, you know, a tortoise, as they all do. Um, this is also the MNP, the Airdrop MNP, which stands, well, I'm not sure what it stands for, but it comes with interchangeable nose pads for those of you who are into that. So again, all these frames come in about two sizes, the 53, this is the larger 55, comes in about five or six colors. They all cost $175. No charge for the lenses when you buy the frame from me. There is a $49.99 lens fee if you do provide your own frame. And then the upgrade to the house anti-glare is $44.99 for a total of $219.99. If you were getting lenses only with anti-glare, that would come to about $94.98 if my math is correct. I'm going to dry everything off here. Run my thumbnail around the lens to get all the optical sawdust off. I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs, push down the nose, it snaps in perfectly. Let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Put the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Oh, Chucky baby. Hit the green arrow again, the clamp shuts, the lens again is going to be traced by the two white styluses. Making sure at first it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's ground tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And again, measuring the thickness where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you got none. No edge thickness whatsoever. But the reason why I put that safety bevel on there, as you will see, essentially it's just smoothing out any rough edges left over from the cutting cycle. But as I push 
the lens into the frame. I tuck it in the outside corner. I do not want any sharp edges on the edge of this lens that will come into contact with this frame as to mar it or blemish it in any way. So everything's going to be perfect. You want a perfectionist like me cutting your lenses. So I've removed the block. I'm going to use my hand approved drying method. Throw that in there. Put the sticker on top. Come down here to my lensometer. I'm going to put it in over that black dot. Turn the axis wheel back to 85. 85. And when I read the power I am getting, minus one and a quarter, heading towards two. That is one, one and a quarter, 152. So we're at one and a quarter. I'm going to check your astigmatism correction of which you have minus 75. Now the unit of measurement we use in the optical world called a diopter. It starts at zero and goes up in quarter increments. 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1 and so on. So you're on the fifth rung of a ladder. You are myopic, also known as nearsighted. So you need five steps of farsighted correction. With your glasses off, everything is much too large. So that's why there's a minus sign. Your lens is minified down to the correct size. Now, once the image is of the correct size, you have an additional three steps of astigmatism correction. This uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F. So essentially, you have five steps this way. You have another three steps this way, and it's how we line up those two curves, which are 90 degrees apart to make everything nice and crisp. And we're going to turn that fine-tune knob to 85, a straight line of 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn that fine-tune knob to 85 which is where that is at. We can now measure and record the second power, minus 75, and we end up at minus 2. How did we get there? Remember high school algebra, we add two like signs together? Yeah, nobody does. Let's use today's terms. If someone borrowed $1.25 from you, then they borrowed another 75 cents, they would owe you $2. That's where we're at, $2 in the red. Now your left eye, you only need two steps of farsighted correction but another seven steps of astigmatism correction, so we're gonna end up at minus two and a quarter. And we're gonna turn that fine two knob to 75. Now, these first two numbers, this is your right eye, this is your left. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from zero to 180. It just tells me where to make everything nice and crisp. So, in just, so the water is spraying, which tells me the lens is in the final cycle. In just a moment, a lever is going to come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning disc, something you find on the end of a Dremel tool. It's a very, very fine grit sandpaper spinning very fast. But it's going to do the safety bevel, essentially smooth out any rough surfaces left over from the cutting process on the back of the lens only. No need to do the front because the front does not protrude from the frame. So let's go ahead and take the left lens out, the Royal Wii. You guys just sit at home and watch. I'll do all this for you. Open up the chuck. Dry the lens off. Run my thumbnail around to make sure there's no optical sawdust on the edge of the lens. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, press down at the nose. Oh, you know what? It doesn't want to go in. So let's take it down another tenth of a millimeter. And I will actually record that onto the paperwork. That's why there's an R and an L here. I'm going to write down that I took that down a tenth of a millimeter more than the right side. So again, the lens goes back in. And instead of going down to the cutting wheel, it's going to go to the bevel wheel. That's going to take a tenth of a millimeter off going around the circumference of this lens until it snaps in there easily. I do not want to force the lens in there. It would cause the frame to stretch or what we in the industry call roll. If you can imagine your frame being a gutter, you have that little bevel. Just like a gutter, if the lens were too large, it would put the force on the bottom of the frame, causing it to roll outwards, giving you an ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the life of the frame. So you want, again, I can't emphasize this enough, you want a perfectionist like me cutting every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide. You only get one chance to make everything perfect. Especially since you don't live next door to me. You're several time zones over. But that is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. It's that little extra at the beginning. To make everything perfect so your frame lasts for a long, long time. With the best look possible.
But Brandon, I know you're pulling off that best look possible. You're gonna make my work look good. So, I just posted a selfie earlier today. Look, there's some optical sawdust. Wipe it on the floor. Someone sent me the Ivan, the, the cheap Ukrainian dude whose video I did a little while ago. He got the transitions extra active with the blue flash mirror. He sent me his pictures. Two of them today. One with them clear. One with them activated outside with the blue mirror. That looks great. Don't worry. I'm going to get a point where I'm going to hassle you for a, a selfie here, Brandon. So, that snaps in there easier now. Take the block off, pull the sticker away, my hand approved drying method, put the sticker on my sticker collection on top. We're going to come back down here to the lensometer, turn the fine tune knob to 75, put it in just above that black dot, and I am getting minus 50, exactly halfway between 0 and 1. Minus 50. Now again, seven steps of astigmatism correction. So if all goes well, we're going to end up at minus 2 and a quarter two and a quarter not quite halfway between two and three so that is cut perfectly I couldn't have done a better job on these lenses if I had done the work myself so your pupillary distance for your right eye is 33 for the left is 33 for a total of 60 75 wait I mathed wrong I didn't know there was gonna be so much uh, math involved okay 66 so I'm gonna place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens when we hold it up to the left we're getting 63 millimeters so that is cut perfectly now this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. But when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first. Also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, well, I can't demonstrate on mine because I'm wearing the Oakley 8132 cross range switch in color 05, the universe blue. Normally for all my glasses, when I take them off, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. These, the pilot temples, and they're called pilot temples because if you can imagine a fighter pilot with their helmet on, they could slide these on and off without having to take their helmet on and off. So let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Flip this over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. Neither temple is askew. So, I send out, as I mentioned, I send out a selfie request in every package. Brandon, I would love to have you send me a selfie rocking these things. Oh, by the way, he got a second pair. They're a polo frame that's coming in tomorrow. I'll get those cut and shipped for you tomorrow as well. Got two pair from it. I do thank you. So, that means two selfies, Brandon. But I also send out uh, cleaning cloths and not just... I also send out uh, instructions on how to care for your frame and lenses, but for the cleaning cloths that I provide and that will care for the cases. So those two will last you for years. No other seller does that on the internet that I am told. So that's it. If you've liked what you've seen, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more Oakley videos. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com, on Twitter as freerxlenses. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me on the website or you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or better yet I like to ask everyone to leave a comment or question in the section below that way I can answer it and everyone else will be able to learn from your inquisitive nature so Brandon in Tulsa Oklahoma thank you for the purchase of the anti-glare lenses for the Oakley where's my flashlight the Oakley 8046 airdrop in the gray shadow color and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.